Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we'll try to understand what are the customer due diligence requirement of a partnership entity. Uh, we'll try to cover some of the important aspects of partnership. Uh, for example, type of partnership, uh, what are the basic concept in, in partnership, and then uh, we'll cover what are the KYC or a customer due diligence requirements are. Uh, we have received a lot of requests uh, to prepare this video. Uh, this video will, will certainly help you uh, or people in their KYC interviews and also to explain uh, what are the customer due diligence requirement of a partnership entity type. If you're watching this video or you are on our channel for the first time, uh, please subscribe for more video on email KYC concept and if you have any question or feedback please share your comments uh, so let's get started uh, before we understand uh, uh, the customer due diligence requirement of a partnership let let us understand a few uh, important concepts uh, partnership in a, in a very layman term, partnership is a business structure made up of two or more people who distribute income or losses between themselves. Partnership deed. Uh, a partnership deed uh, uh, is an agreement between the partners of a firm that outline the terms and condition of the partnership among the partner. The smooth and successful running of a partnership firm require a clear understanding among its partner regarding the various policies governing their partnership. The partnership deed serve this purpose. Uh, it specify various terms uh, such as profit and loss sharing, salary, interest on capital, drawing, uh, admission of a new partner, etc. in order to bring clarity to the partner. Uh, and also, uh, when when we get down into AML and uh, the, the customer due diligence or KYC requirement, uh, it serves as one of the important document, uh, which which also become a collection and a verification source during customer due diligence process. General partner, uh, a general partner either play an active role in the company daily operations or is, is a managing partner. Uh, a, part, a general partner for a business can act on the company behalf uh, while a general partner has uh, important responsibility and duties in the partnership. They also have unlimited uh, liability regarding uh, the financial dealing of the partnership. Uh, limited partner, uh, on the other hand, limited partner, uh, sometimes also known as silent partner, has limited liability for the company's liabilities and debt. Uh, it is uh, different from general partner. Uh, how much liability a limited partner acquire is based on how much capital they contribute. And let's also uh, understand uh, uh, another important concept, uh, which is type of uh, partnership. So in, in uh, general, uh, there, there can be uh, three uh, um, main type of partnership, but in some jurisdiction, uh, we have seen, seen more than three but uh, overall, in, in majority of the jurisdiction, uh, we'll see these three uh, partnership type. So let's understand uh, all of them. Uh, first being a general partnership. A general partnership is the most basic uh, form of partnership. Uh, it does not require forming uh, a business activity, business entity, uh, and in, in most cases, partner form their business by signing a partnership agreement. Ownership and profit are usually split evenly among the partner, although they may have they may establish different terms 
in the partnership agreement. Uh, in, in general partnership, all the partner have independent power to bind the business to contract and loan. Now let's understand uh, the limited partnership. A limited partnership, uh, normally known as LP, are formal uh, business entities authorized by the state. Uh, they have at least one general partner who is fully responsible for the business and uh, one or more limited partner who provide money but do not uh, actively manage the business. A limited partner invest in the business for financial return and are not responsible in for its debt and liabilities. Limited liability partnership. A limited liability partnership operates, uh, operates like a general partnership uh, with all partners actively managing the business, but it limits their liability for uh, one another's actions. Uh, the partner still be a full responsibility for the debts and legal liability of the business, but they are not responsible for errors or omission uh, of their fellow partners. Now let's uh, understand the basic uh, concept uh, of customer due diligence. Uh, in a layman term, uh, customer due diligence would involve verifying customer identity, understanding the business to assess the level of risk they possess. Uh, you may refer our videos on customer due diligence to understand when customer due diligence is performed, types of customer due diligence, and difference between enhanced due diligence, standard due diligence, and simplified due diligence. But currently, uh, we we are will stick to what are the customer due diligence or KYC requirement of a partnership firm. So if we look at uh, the KYC element, like in the majority of the entity type, uh, you will have uh, these six uh, uh, major element uh, which would cover uh, the entire customer due diligence process. First being uh, identification and verification. Uh, here we identify and verify the identity and legal existence of the partnership. Uh, understanding the customer profile mainly comprises of uh, understanding the purpose of creating a partnership, uh, which your partnership was created, the ownership structure, nature of business, purpose of the relationship, and then so on. Uh, Identification of associated parties, this would include uh, identifying uh, partners, uh, beneficial owners, etc. Screening, it is about name screening, adverse media check on the customer, uh, its UBO and other associated parties. Uh, risk assessment, uh, this would primarily com uh, comprise of identifying a risk presented by customer basis the information uh, captured. Uh, documentation, it, it would be uh, evidence saved uh, to keep the record uh, of action or assumptions. Now let's uh, get into uh, more detail. Uh, first important element uh, being identification and uh, verification. Uh, it's, it's a very critical component uh, of an if an effective customer due diligence process. Uh, identification of customer is followed by verification through official documents and records. And this is the first step in the entire customer due diligence process. Uh, and if we get into more detail, uh, the uh, what, what we do in identification and verification the first element would be we need to verify the name of the partnership uh, or it can be any other name of business to carry on their business. Uh, it is important to identify and verify the correct name of an, an entity to differentiate it from similar sounding organization 
also a previous name or aliases are important when we perform name screening as organization may be known as uh, other name uh, previously or chain name once it is listed on any of the blacklist then we also verify the address of an entity so address uh, like normally we see uh, capturing registered address uh, principal place of business a uh, country of operation country of incorporation uh, the principal place of business and the registered address help the bank to understand that they are not getting into relationship uh, with a customer who is operating from uh, high risk or or a sanctioned country also majority of the bank don't accept uh, po box address for for the obvious reasons uh, date of establishment of uh, partnership uh, type of partnership whether it's a general partnership limited partnership or limited liability partnership uh, verification of uh, registration number uh it it may be a unique number assigned to an entity in the country of jurisdiction uh at times we also uh try to gather tax identification number or any other business number issued to a partnership entity type legal existence of an entity here we try to ascertain if partnership is still active uh and not dissolved so this is more about uh, uh, what we do in uh, identification and verification now let us also understand some of the verification sources uh, for for a partnership entity uh, so in the, like majorly uh, what we have seen is uh, uh, in in partnership entity type we normally the most important uh, document would be partnership agreement from where uh, you collect and verify uh, verify information about partnership uh, entity type uh, sometime we also uh, try to gather uh, information from a notice uh, which they would have received from tax authorities any certificate of uh, registration uh business registration uh, bodies uh, government website and also uh f- like very very rare but uh, if information is available on uh, local as well as global data uh, providers uh such as lexis nexis equifax uh, dnb uh, worldcheck rdc then that can also be uh, used but uh, uh information about partnership on global data uh, provider would be very very limited uh at times when data is not uh, uh readily available through independent on reliable sources so in in all such cases a bank uh, uh, would rely on customer emails and statements to gather information uh in in, in uh, some um, um in some jurisdiction or like what we have seen in some banks they also consider uh, the partnership uh, entity website to verify some of their information so now once uh, we have performed identification and verification of customer and we are certain the customer is who he say he is next step is to gather more information to understand about the customer profile so in order to understand the customer profile uh, and again it's it's one of the important step uh, is to verify the the identity or or i would say it is more important to identify and verify the identity of the third party if your uh, customer is acting on behalf of a third party so third party can be individual entity uh, people uh, who we call gatekeepers such as chartered accountant lawyers so one of the regulatory requirement is to verify 
uh, verify identity of all a certainable beneficial owner of, of the partnership uh, entity type uh, identification and verification of uh, ultimate beneficial owner is important uh, uh, for a bank to initiate relationship or discontinue business relationship if a customer or ultimate beneficial owner is involved in uh, uh, or a rated high risk for altogether for uh, for different reason which can uh, being uh, being in a high risk country part of sanction or blacklist uh, etc so while mapping uh, ultimate beneficial ownership uh, there may be a chances uh, that uh, we are only able to identify 85% of the ownership and the remaining is, is not easily available through online or uh, the approved sources we have. In all such cases, uh, we may perform client outreach uh, to provide complete detail of uh, ownership. Uh, then understanding of nature of business uh, is also important. Customer may carry different uh, level of risk depending on the activity or services uh, they provide. Understanding nature of business become handy and one of the critical factor during customer risk assessment. In order to understand the nature of business, we may, may need to understand products sold, sold by the customer, services provided by the customer, total turnover of the customer as well as uh, average turnover for last five years, investment portfolios. Uh, so that all help us to understand uh, uh, the, the, the nature of business. Then what is the, the nature of relationship uh, which a customer would like to have with bank? So it is also important to ascertain the nature of uh, a relationship with customer. Uh, it can be a loan account, trade finance, check-in account, etc. Bank would also determine whether product or services requested fits within the customer nature of business, bases the product opted by customer, uh, risk level would also differ during the customer risk assessment. Then comes uh, uh, identification of source of fund. Uh, source of fund uh, uh, refers to the origin of the particular fund or any other monetary instrument which are subject of the transaction between a bank and the customer. Understanding source of wealth is the cornerstone of due diligence, particul particularly uh, for an ultra wealthy whose transactional behavior is often of much greater magnitude than those of lesser wealth. Uh, normally, uh, normally uh, this information would come from client itself, but it would important to understand a source of fund uh, or proceed from customer business activity, uh, any other source of fund other than business activity, suspicion about legitimacy of customer source of fund. Now let's understand the source of wealth also. Source of wealth is a, is a distinct uh, from source of fund and it describes the activity which have generated the total net worth of a customer both within and outside of a relationship. Those activities that have generated uh, client funds and uh, property. Now moving on to, to the next slide. Uh, and this is another uh, important element of our customer due diligence process or a KYC requirement. Because by now we have uh, like some understanding about the partnership. Uh, the, the next important aspect is to verify the associated parties. So in case of uh, uh, partnership firm, uh, 
the mainly the associated parties uh, would include partners so that can be depending on uh, the partnership type so it can be a general partner or a limited partner and also uh, uh, when we say it can be a general partner or a limited partner they can further be an individual or as well as uh, entities then we also uh, look at uh, key individuals and principal other important uh, 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 individuals in, uh, in in the partnership firm and at times uh, we also see some guarantors or uh, collateral providers uh, where we need to uh, verify information about that uh, the key individual and principals uh, uh, basically are employees uh, chosen to control and govern the daily business activity of a of a legal entity uh, for individual uh, uh, identified as a associated parties the detail to be captured uh, uh, would mainly comprises of a full name date of birth uh, country of residence and and uh, any unique identifier uh, so it can be password number driving license number or in in case of uh, united states it can be uh, last four digit of ssn uh, and and uh, the source to verify the information can be through public available or reliable sources uh, which are government registries trust deed uh, not not trust deed uh, i would say a uh, passport or a driving license or any other government issue document or website and for partners uh, who can be non individual uh, so they can be uh, they can be of any entity types so tr- it can be trust company partnership etc so what what i uh, what i meant here is uh, so when when we see a partnership firm uh, not uh, not every time uh, it would be two individual which are forming uh, a partnership uh, firm so there can be two different entity time types uh, which are coming together to create a partnership firm and uh, when two different entity types are coming together so they can be of a different uh, uh, different types so they can be trust they can be company and again they can also be another partnership firm which are coming together for this uh, partnership uh, uh, relationship and uh, so in all such cases we need to perform uh, id and v uh, basis their entity types and kyc requirements so now let's move to another uh, concept uh, of uh, customer due diligence uh, once we have identified uh, and we understand uh, the customer nature of business and uh, the associated parties uh, with, uh, which are uh, involved uh, or associated with uh, with with our kyc entity then we we perform uh, a screening uh, on all of them some of them depending on your bank uh, policies and procedures uh, so here we we generally perform uh, name screening uh, which is done by checking the identity of a customer its beneficial owner main principal and other associated party against the screening list so the third party service uh, third party service provider uh, such as world check uh, rdc net reveal etc they they come really handy uh, when we perform uh, all those screenings uh, uh, and and uh, depending upon bank policies and guidelines the screening result uh, uh, may may remain valid for 6 month 9 months or a year uh, we we already have a separate video on name and customer screening you may also refer it for for more details now once we are done with with the screening 
so this is the time when uh, you would finalize uh, you would perform a final customer risk assessment so basically your your uh, customer can can be high risk medium risk and low risk depending on the customer due diligence performed in all the previous uh, steps which we discussed in 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 this video so the customer risk assessment uh, must be a risk based approach and uh, carried out using customer risk assessment model based on identification of high risk indicators and uh, red flags some of the red flags will be identified during uh, other KYC processes like transaction due diligence customer activity monitoring normally the risk assessment model would have risk factors and sub risk factors already defined uh, in the methodology uh, for example some of the uh, key risk factors uh, which we have seen in in majority of of the banks and jurisdictions are entity type risk country risk industry risk uh, product risk which uh, are uh, four high level risk factor which which uh, create uh, uh, normally a customer risk uh, assessment model uh, the risk classification can be high medium and low and the risk classification will drive the frequency of future periodic review to be performed on on the client and in the case of a uh, risk level of a client uh, which is identified as uh, as high then it need to be escalated uh, uh, in in few banks it can be mlr mlro it can be compliance team it can be fcc team who would uh, uh, review and give their uh, uh, acceptance or approval to to move ahead with the case or they can also let you know uh, to to close the case depending on the risk level so apart from uh, fcc uh, we also require uh, approval from business uh, from on in order to move ahead on on the high risk high risk cases now moving on to our, our last uh, but no, but very important uh, aspect of uh, Uh, of our customer due diligence which is documentation so once we carry out the carry out the customer due diligence process we need to ensure that we are able to present this knowledge of our customer in a clear comprehensive and consistent manner this comprehensiveness and consistency is important for both internal stakeholder and for and for demonstrating our approach to external stakeholders such as regulator the customer due diligence document or a folder of each customer should clearly demonstrated the information and documentation obtained during the customer due diligence review and presented with maximum clarity and comparability it is always a good practice to uh, that every document uh, Uh, we should have a clear description of its type and the purpose which is mentioned on the first page and if uh, document consisting more than one page uh, we we should uh, have a short content uh, list with uh, relevant pages and the key information on them and that too on on the first page and if a document is translated then it is advisable to mention a source of translation and section which have been translated for with the purpose uh, another good practice in documentation is to following naming convention uh, this help in identifying the relevant document as well as uh, it save lot of time uh, which you or other uh, kyc folks uh, would spend in identifying a document in absence of no or improper indexing so this is all about uh, customer uh, due diligence process or a kyc requirement of a partnership entity type so we hope you like this video uh, please share your comments 
and let us know if you want us to prepare any specific video on any other interesting topics. Thank you so much. You have a nice day.